Yeah, so Baba is a short film about a six-year-old who has a unique ability that he uses to protect himself from kind of the scary and dangerous things in, in his life. And so kind of we find him in one day of that kind of experience of trying to protect himself. Yeah. Mm. And like his family, his mother and sister or, or brother and stuff are there. Yeah. So the, the film uh, takes place like the day after Christmas. So the people we find in his home are his mother, his aunt, his cousin, who had all come over and stayed over for Christmas. And so the, the film takes place that day after Christmas. Yeah. And it's like, how long is it? So maybe like 20 minutes? It's 15 minutes. 15, yeah, it's 15 okay. minutes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So one thing that I, I noted was it's very beautiful to, uh, to look at. The visuals are very strong. So tell me what you shot on and tell people about your cinematographer. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I worked with a cinematographer from Sweden uh, called Robin Asselmeyer. And, you know, originally, even from uh, the script phase, I was very specific about the kind of images uh, that I wanted for the film. And so originally, even the plan was to shoot on uh, 16 mil because the film has a lot of nostalgic feelings for it because there's a lot of it that's coming from my own past and uh, past of a few people I know, close friends. So nostalgia was really going to be a rich part of it. Uh, but we weren't able to uh, go the film route. So we just ended up shooting it digitally uh, with Ari Mini um, and just some antique lenses. And the But the, in terms of the pictures and the images, we had a very specific photographic feel. Mm. I wanted almost every shot to feel like you were flipping through an old family album. Mm. and everything felt like it was picked out from a family album so that was kind of the motivation behind the images that's really interesting so you started off it's like a visual catalog and then you just uh plug it in in a shoot yeah nice exactly. tell yeah. people about that process yeah, so, uh, you know, um, we had quite a few discussions with the uh, cinematographer and the producer as well, because, you know, all the departments had to come together to do this, right? You, uh, even the locations and everything, as I said, we're going for nostalgia, you know, like even the house, it doesn't scream old school, but that's not how modern Kenyan houses look now. That's a very specific reference to early 90s Kenya, but I do want to shout period piece. So mm. there was just a lot of mood boarding and literally referencing old photo albums <laughs> of my own and of different members of the crew and just picking up very specific because I believe the best way to do this is is not generic. Um, mm. I don't like doing things in a generic way. I like picking up very specific things, even though they're specific to one person. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's truer than a general generic idea of what the 90s might have looked like. Mm. Um, and so we went very specific with everything from the set design to the wardrobe to just even the way the characters uh, played out their performances. Yeah, and the, the beauty of doing it specifically is only you and your team could do it like that. Exactly. It, it, it felt like uh, a story only we could tell, but that doesn't mean that it's also a story only for us. I feel right. like there's a lot of relatability and a lot of connection that audiences can find with the film do you remember the, the first piece of inspiration that came to you to make this short yeah the the the, the short features of beach and yeah. the first it's an isolated beach uh in the east of kenya like literally no one for miles and the first time i ever went there on an adventure many years ago i kept wishing i had found this place as a kid it felt mm. like the perfect place for a kid to get away from everything. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first image and it's literally the opening and closing image of the film. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that that's where it began, you know, just that kind of, the idea of escape, the idea of time out, but on your own terms, I guess, not punishment, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just taking a breather, yeah. Mm. I, I thought that, that was definitely my favorite, uh, those are my favorite scenes in the movie for sure. It is very striking. So okay. it must be uh, pretty great to have uh, Baba play at uh, TIFF this year. So tell me about what it feels like to get into the festival and are you going to be at the festival? Yeah, so it, 
it's really fantastic to get uh, back into it because uh, my first feature film I actually played the six year this year nice. uh, in the discovery section. So for Tiff to ask us back with this film just felt amazing. I will be there at the festival. Uh, you know, Tiff, I can honestly say was the launching pad for my film career because before that I've lived many other lives as a musician and other things. So mm -hmm. uh, Katikati, the feature film was called Katikati was my first feature and the support and the reception at TIFF was ridiculous and amazing because for us, it was an experiment to see if we can mm -hmm. tell stories. Not, it wasn't like this big grand idea mm -hmm. of a project that we're gonna, you know, change the world with, but it's just mm -hmm. like, let's just tell this small story. And then we ended up playing at TIFF, winning a prize at TIFF, and that kind of just kick-started uh, my film career. So I'll always have a soft spot for TIFF. <laughs> Very cool. And you're going to be there? Yes, I will be there for Very the nice. entire festival. I'm, I'm coming to see films even. Oh, um, cool. So you're going to be there for the, yeah. for the full festival? Yeah. I have That's to, amazing. Last time, last time I didn't get to enjoy the whole festival, because also I was running around so much, but this one, yeah. I'm there for the shorts, but I'm also there for the festival. Oh, like, cool, man. It. It's really nice to mellow into a festival. You stay there for 10 days, yeah. watch a bunch of films. It's a great time. Exactly, exactly. Is there anything you're looking forward to in particular? Yeah, I actually, I'm really excited to catch Sam Mendes' new film. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's called, what's it? I forget the name, Empire. The Empire, Empire of Light. Light. Yeah, Emperor of I Lights. think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm excited to be able to catch that early because we get those kind of films here like eight months after. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. This feels like a previous being. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, man. That's great. That's fantastic. So what are, what are some movies? Let's say, let's say you're going to play Baba before any feature film of your choice or maybe mm. just a few. What are what's yeah. a good adjacent movie feature film for this uh, for Baba to play before or maybe even afterwards? I think just thematically and just uh, yeah thematically and emotionally probably Beast of the Southern Wild. Ah uh, yeah yeah would be a good would be a good option to pair it with maybe Where the Wild Things Are mm. would be a good option to pair it with and then on uh i guess a random side would be little miss sunshine probably okay <laughs> cute cute okay <laughs> <laughs> very nice very nice so tell me about your cast yeah so uh we had an incredible cast a small cast of four um and you know the lead character who is baba is malik mm -hmm. he's 6 years old and he's just he's one of the best actors I've worked with just because he wasn't acting. This this character was within him and he's one of those people who you stare at and their eyes tell you a thousand stories mm. just through his eyes alone. He doesn't need to speak. He just carries so much weight. Even a single sigh feels like it has a thousand layers to it. Mm. So he was excellent. Uh, this is cousin Kevin who was played by um, Kenya called uh, Victor. And Victor is actually 18, though in the story he's playing a uh, 16-year-old. Mm. Um, but he, he's also a very young, promising talent in the Kenyan acting industry. Mm. Uh, he's been in a few short films, and I, I believe he's now in a TV show that he's working on. Uh, but he's also one of those just really incredible talents who... I, lo I love actors who embody, who don't... Their first impulse isn't to verbalize, the emotion mm. they're looking for. They're not trying to tell you how they're feeling, but the, instantly they just emit it and carry it and carry these characters. And those two boys were like amazing to work with. And then the the mothers were played by veteran Kenyan actresses. So there's Faith Kibati and Becky and shows they, they played their mom and auntie. And they're also like They've been in the TV industry in Kenya, especially for a while, but mm. this was out of character for them. Mm. So like Becky, for example, who is Kevin's mother, who is very strict and authoritarian in this particular short, uh, is usually cast as a more glamorous wife, socialist, socialite, not socialist, right, right. socialite, and that kind of thing. So it was nice to give her a chance to play out of typecast. So, yeah. 
Okay. And, and how long did it take you to shoot the projects? And tell me about the most rewarding day. Yeah, so because, you know, we were basically on a skeleton budget just working mm. off our own money. So everything was tighter than it should have been. We mm. shot over three and a half days, which included traveling to the coast. Mm. And I think the most rewarding was sh shooting in the coast because basically we shot one night and one morning uh, with like very little sleep in between. <laughs> and it, as I said, the beach was very remote and it just felt kind of special to be out there with the small crew and just kind of looking for magic, you know? Mm. And waiting to see, because it's also, it was up to the sun to give us whatever it's going to give us. If <laughs> it's, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, you know, if it's going <laughs> to be cloudy, it's going to be cloudy. Uh, so I really love such moments where you just kind of wait and see what will happen. Okay, great. So what, what do you think is your greatest strength as a director? Aha, uh -huh. that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think anyone has ever asked me that. Mm. <laughs> nice. I think <laughs> I think I so I always zero in on the emotion <laughs> that's that's um central to any particular scene, even the lightest ones. And I think where I try to put my strengths is in doing the least but expressing the most. So mm. I don't like I don't like overexpressive filmmaking mm -hmm. I, i'm okay watching it but it's mm -hmm. not part of me like so i won't shoot something 64 times coverage and hope to find it in edit mm -hmm. i will try to find it on set and uh in the most yeah in the most sophisticated way kind of just bring that emotion out sophisticated if i can pull it off <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so catching those like little natural moments instead of going exactly. for like the melodramatic, you know, over the top. Fair yeah, way. yeah. I don't know. I, I cringe on set. Yeah. 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 I cringe on set if anything goes like if the volume of anything goes a bit too high for me, I usually yeah. pull everything back. <laughs> <laughs> Which director or directors uh do you aspire to grow into like true that list is very specific yeah mainly because as i said i started in music uh with an art collective and band so yeah. the original inspiration for my filmmaking will always be spike jones uh nice. just because spike spike is is interesting and i think my work sometimes i find it echoing his in that on his music video side and everything, he was crazy. Uh, and then when you watch his films, it's like, I know adaptations are a bit crazy, but the rest are like very sober yeah, yeah, yeah. minded, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I really like that. So Spike Jones is definitely an inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, Michel Gondry will always inspire. I, I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm like him, but he'll always inspire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just cause I, I wish I had that kind of imagination. So he inspired yeah. me to keep pushing my imagination further. And then lastly, on the film side, Sam Mendes, just cause mm. not from the James Bond, like I really love Sam Mendes, like from American Beauty, uh, mm. going into Road to Perdition mm. and Jarhead. There was just something right. also how he was jumping genres, but being so, he's that sophisticated filmmaker I'm talking about. The one where yeah. everything is just perfect, like. Mm -hmm. I even watched Road to Perdition again the other day just to see if it still holds up. And man, it's something. That's those. This is a really good uh, three: Spike Jones, Michelle Gondry, and Sam Mendes. That's very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're all over the place. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like, I like it. It's good. But BT, thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate uh, chatting with you today. Tell me what's next for you. Yeah. So currently in early pre-production for a, a feature film post-apocalyptic adventure uh, uh, that we're hoping to film here in Kenya soon and also currently in development for a TV series, a limited series. Yeah. So, All right. Well, lots of luck to you. That's also coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I had a lot of fun talking to you today.